Hello, I'm Steve Hermitage and in this video we'll take a look at how you can take portrait shots in the studio using continuous lighting, so no flash photography. OK, let's walk through some of the camera settings and just think about the light that we've got in the studio. Now, tungsten lights from this continuous lighting will create a colour cast on the subject like any different types of artificial light, whether it be uh, strip lighting, the, the uh, fluorescent lighting, or whether you use tungsten bulbs in lighting like this. It creates a colour cast, so we need to sort that out. And what we're going to do is go to custom white balance on our camera. So there's auto white balance, and then there's different white balance settings on your camera, but there will be one which is a custom white balance. And we've got a white background here, and I'm, what I'm going to do is just set the camera on aperture priority mode, set the uh, focus here to manual focus, doesn't really matter too much, and just take an image there of the white background. And that will have an orangey colour cast because of these, this lighting. So if I just go into my camera settings now, and I go to white balance, I can choose the custom white balance feature, I can use the image that I've just taken, and if I take another image, on the background there, what you'll see is I don't have that orange colour cast anymore. I'm back to um, the camera metering and creating an, uh, a grey background. Okay, fantastic. That's the first part then. The next part is to think about the intensity of this light and what uh, ISO setting we might use. Now, in this type of lighting, I'm going to choose ISO of 400. So let me just pop that into the camera. There we are. That's set to 400. I'm going to now go on to manual for my aperture setting and for my shutter speed because what I'm going to use is one of these, a, uh, a, a meter, the light meter just to take some meter readings. So let's put the camera on the tripod. I'm going to have the camera in the same position for all of these shots and the subject today is this carving that my wife's granddad did a number of years ago and what we're going to do is move the lights around and see what happens to the light on this subject. Okay so my subject's in place, the lights are in place, let's take a look at the light meter now. Now there are a number of different light meters on the market but the principles are just the same with all of them. You dial in the ISO setting into the light meter as the same as the ISO setting that you put into the camera. So in here I've dialed in ISO 400 and then you're in manual mode on the camera, so you have to select the shutter speed and the aperture. So I'm going to dial into here that I want to use a 125th of a second shutter speed. And then if I press the button here, it will then tell me, F8, that that is the right combination to get the correct exposure in the camera. So I choose the, uh, the shutter speed that I want to use. I've set the ISO. And then when I press this, this is telling me the aperture. Okay, right, let's do some readings then. So I've got ISO 400, 1 to 125th of a second. If I take a reading here, I get F16. If I take the reading on this side, and just angle it slightly, I get F8. And if I put the light meter where the camera is, so the light that is bouncing, I'm actually going to go into the camera, if I take that reading, that one is F4. Okay, so I've now I've got three different aperture settings. What one do I choose? Well, that's where you can, let's, let's do those three settings. Let's do F16, F8, and F4, and let's see the different shots that we get. Okay, so let's go around here now, into the camera. Uh, there we go, so I'm on 125th. I'm going to select here F, let's go down to F4 to begin with. Take that shot, okay, and I'm going to go to F8 and take that shot, and now I'm going to go to F16 and take that shot. And what I've got are three completely different images, and the one that I need to take is the one, as a photographer, I think is the most creative and the right shot. For me, I think actually the one in the middle of the F8 shot is probably the best shot in this particular case. Okay, so let's just look now at the, let's just look at the lighting. I've got one light lighting this side and you notice it's a different distance 
from the subject to this light. And light falls off, the intensity of the light falls off with the distance. So in other words, if I move this light a bit further that way, then the, the intensity of the light on this side of the subject will be less. So I can get less light by moving the light source further away. But these two lights here are pretty hard lighting. There's a single point light source and it's quite directional hard light. And I can soften that light by using, over here, one of these and an umbrella. And if I put an umbrella onto the lighting here, and I'm going to put this one on this side, this, there we go. And let's keep a light source. I was putting I was a light source on either side. This time, what I'm going to do is just put this position, this light, just on over this side. And that's some pretty hard light lighting the back. It will create like a rim, if you like, of light on the subject. And then I've got a more soft, diffused light over this side. If I just move that round, let's go back. I don't know if you can see that on there. I'm going to take another meter reading just here. It's giving me F4, so let's dial F4 into the camera. Here we go. Go down to F4, take another image. There we go. And you can see now I've got a completely different type of lighting. There we go, there's another image. What I'm going to do now is switch one of these lights off, each one in turn, and let's have a look and see what that image looks like. So let's take our meter reading, I think F8 was the one that I just had a look, yep, F8, and I'll dive that into the camera, um, here we go, so just switch the camera back on again, dial in F8, and take that image, there we go, that's looking pretty good, and I'm going to leave F8 on now and just show you what happens when I switch our main light off. So, switch that one off, come around and take another image. Okay, that's kind of giving almost a, a silhouette if you like. Now I'm going to switch this one off, oh, and switch this one back on again. There we go, so now we've got just our soft light coming on onto this side and let's take that one. So what you can hopefully see is that when you have pairs of lights you can create one type of lighting and then if you use the lights individually you're going to get different types of light and you can see by taking the individual uh, shots with just one light on you can see the type of light that each of these are contributing to our overall shot. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, so here's another variation. What I've done now, I've brought in a black background just to sit behind the giraffe and I've moved the lighting. It's now very hard lighting again. I've got one light lighting this side of the giraffe, one light quite close actually to create like a rim lighting on this side to separate the giraffe from the background. It create, kind of creates this nice separation. Let's have a look at the meter reading now. If I can just get my light meter. If I take one here, that's giving me F11. So I'm going to dial F11 into the camera and let's take that shot. Okay, just go into F11, switch the camera back on again. There we go. And there we go. But what you can see in that image is some of this light is spilling over so I don't have an absolutely pure black background. Now I can fix that in Photoshop, but what I can do to help my cause here is to get a piece of black cardboard, and if I just put that cardboard in there, that's going to prevent some of the light spilling over onto the background, and I think I can just about reach. I'm going to take one more image here. Uh, hopefully, if I just go back, I'm going to have a quick look at that one. There we go. I've actually got a little bit of the cardboard in that shot. That doesn't matter, I'm going to fix that one up in Photoshop. And this gives a completely different lighting effect.
Okay, we've got our last lighting setup now. What I've done, I've moved that light out of the way. I've left this light where it is, and I'm still going to have the black background. And I think I'll leave the camera at f11 for this shot. Let's just take the shot as it is at the moment. So I've just I've got this thing here. I'm just going to move that out of the way, and we'll bring that in in just a moment. So let's take that shot as it is. There we go, you can see we've got the really nice rim lighting on the back. What I've got here is a reflector, and what I can do is bring the reflector in, put the reflector in shot, not in shot, but uh, you use the reflector there to bounce some of this light back onto this side of the subject. And let's take another image and see what that look like, looks like. So, let's do that. And that's been really helpful to light this side of the subject. Now reflected light isn't as strong as light obviously from a point light source and you can play with moving the distance of the reflector to the subject to create more light over this side or you can increase uh, the intensity of this light by moving it closer to the subject. Well, I hope the number of different lighting setups have been useful in this video. It's really a case with continuous lighting of experimenting, playing with different types of light. You can have hard light, you can soften the light by using an umbrella and diffusing the light. Choose different types of background and then use reflectors to reflect light back in onto the subject. And of course the other thing you can do is use, like I did with the black cardboard, uh, uh, points to block out pieces of light to stop them spilling over into the background. Here are all those shots again with different types of lighting. Good luck with your continuous lighting setups.